So this video is on uh, bridge crankshaft development from say early 50s through well, at least 2011. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> we start with this old clunker here. It's probably out of like a two and a half horse Briggs push mower engine. Very long shaft on it, and uh, you can see the crankshaft journal here. It's fairly small. This is because they uh, used a uh, smaller connecting rod on the the like two, two and a half uh, horse engines there. So that's the main feature of that. You can see, you know, I'll compare it to the next one here, see the see the difference in size between the crank journal there. Uh, these uh, <coughs> these crankshafts, the uh, crank pin is induction hardened, so uh, that helps with uh, longevity on, uh, you know, how long they'll, they'll last and how tough it is. And, to my knowledge, they're made out of a thing called ductile iron. It's kind of halfway between cast iron and steel, and it has a good uh, good properties, like maybe vibration absorbing. And uh, if you hit it, it reacts more like steel. It doesn't shatter like cast iron. So uh, seems to be pretty pretty tough uh, stuff. Um, let's see. Now this one, this is like the standard uh, three three and a half horse uh, crankshaft from. I don't know, let's we'll say early 1960s up through could be early 1990s. Not 100% positive of the the 1990s date. But anyway, they're they're basically all the same. Uh one variant, you got the snout here for the uh standard uh style recoil starter, long snout on them. And then you got the short snout, and that's for the vertical pull type uh, that uses the gear teeth on the flywheel, uh, like the 76 I'm taking apart. So it's just the snout on the crankshaft is shorter. Other than that, the crankshaft is identical. They all, they all have uh, built-in gears on them, so they had to uh, cut the teeth on. It's integral with the crankshaft, one piece. <coughs> Excuse me. This is the one out of Mr. CZ here. You can see he's seen better days. Uh, let's see. And the crankshafts come in uh, varying lengths here, as you can see. Um, I got this one. He's probably even longer yet. Yep. Yeah, he's longer. This one, this particular one's out of a real short stub shaft from probably like the late 70s, early 80s. Those shafts were basically so short you couldn't bend them. Unfortunately, the longer ones, that's not always the case. And then the other thing to note is the points punt plunger flat. All these old ones will have that. You'll see it there. There. Newer engines like this one. After what was it? 84. They brought out the magnetron ignition. Let's see, compare the two. No points plunger flat anymore. And the other thing they did made the uh, gear removable. It was just a uh, square. Uh, peg there. Um, so this is a uh, sintered metal gear. They uh, uh, take powder metal, slam it into a mold, heat it up, melt it all together, and then uh, it slides on there. I've actually broken a couple of these. Like my uh, Briggs 327 stacker there broke one. Vibration. Next time I'll JB weld it to the crankshaft to get rid of any kind of fluctuation. Okay, so this lad on the end here, uh, okay, I'm going to back up a little bit. So this one, still in the motor, it's a 2011, I know because it's still got the starter cover on it, and by 2011 they cheaped out even more. It's got plastic gear now. Plastic gear, and there's a steel washer on the bottom of it there for a thrust washer. So it's got this little pin on it there that meshes with the cutout in the crankshaft. So that's your that's your new gear. I'm not a huge fan as you can tell. If you have one of these don't forget that steel washer or it'll it'll melt the gear. Friction can't take the can't take the friction and the pressure. That's why it needs the steel washer. Um, 
Yeah, so, you know, I much prefer the integral gear, but obviously that costs too much to make, so then they went with the centered gear, which seemed to be fine, and now they got a plastic gear. So, then, last variant here, I don't want to make this video last forever. So, <clears throat> they got smart, and they decided to go from 9 cubic inch to 10 cubic inch by making a stroker crank. So, physically, externally, the crank basically looks the same, you know, it pretty much looks the same as this one, other than also it's got the, the cut-off snout, but that's because of the new type of recoil starter. Uh, it's not, it's not, it's, I'll compare them, I'll show you. See, it's, it, the one on the left's a new one, it's shorter than the snout on the vertical pole Briggs, um, but uh, anyway, so that's one, one thing, but yeah, they reduced, basically they reduced the um, diameter of the crank pin and uh, machined it offset so they gain uh, stroke. Piston goes back and forth further so the engine displaces more air so it's now 10 cubic inch instead of 9. So that gains them, I don't know, quarter horse or something. So that's the latest variant there. But anyway, that pretty much covers the, uh, we'll say, 2 to three and three quarter push and four horse uh, Briggs and Stratton uh, push mower crankshafts all their variants like say if you're looking for a particular crank somewhere you want to make sure that the length is right because there's three or four different lengths now they seem to kind of standardize with this this uh, I don't know it's about two and three quarter three inches long something like that but those cranks like the bend I think this one's bent Got to keep your lawnmower away from the rock pile. And anyway, everybody have a good one.